downtown now. A new report released today reveals mechanics, shockingly, do not need a licence to work on your car. Yes, you heard me correctly. Mechanics, shockingly, do not need a licence to work on your car. So how do you know if someone's qualified or not? And when was the last time you asked to see someone's qualifications? Or do you just pull into the garage, let them do whatever they want and just take it on good faith that everything is hunky-dory? Talk a little bit more about this. I'm joined on the line by Steve Nash, the Chief Executive of the Institute of the Motor Industry. Steve, you're very, very welcome to Daytime on Downtown. Thank you, Siobhan. Good to be here. See- Steve, I, I, I find this really, really hard to believe. I know. Most people do, actually. Uh, uh, most people do. But, I mean, our survey showed that, uh, well, I mean, just taking Northern Ireland, 57% of people in Northern Ireland said they wouldn't let somebody work on their car who wasn't properly qualified. But only 9% of people have ever actually asked uh, because there's this sort of innate trust that there's something in place. Uh, and, and you know, we our, our survey showed that over 40, 40% of people thought that a licence was already in place. Uh, uh, and in fact, a separate study we did showed even higher figures of around 70%. So there's this huge amount of trust, but it is an unregulated sector. So anybody, and I mean absolutely anybody, could set themselves up to service and repair cars. Uh, and so, are you, so are you telling me that, because I was talking about this earlier on The Breakfast Show with Gary and Kirsty, and I was under the impression whenever I was at school, there was a training centre beside... The, the school that I went to and the guys that wanted to learn a trade like bricking, like mechanicking, um, you know, any of the building trades or, as I say, mechanicking, went to the training centre and they learnt their trade or they served their time. Well, of course, there are a, a lot of very highly trained people. You know, our, our, our sector spends over £100 million a year training people and there are some excellent people out there. But, of course, there are also loads and loads of people out there who haven't done any of that. You know, we, we know of around about 200,000 technicians, uh, uh, mechanics out there. Um, but there are many, many, many more than that because most of them we, we, we wouldn't have any record of because, you know, they're, 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 because they haven't undertaken training or development. So, you know, yeah, I mean, those, those guys who are, and that's what we're trying, uh, we're, we're, the point we're trying to make is that, you know, those people who have properly trained to do the job should be differentiated from those people who, who haven't. Uh, just like, you know, there are people out there who aren't properly qualified to work on gas boilers, but you know that because there's a licensing scheme in place, you know, the gas safe scheme. Similarly now, you know, you're, uh, you know, most people feel they're pretty competent to change a plug, but actually you can't do that anymore. You're supposed to use a licensed electrician. So the government have actually, no, you know, recognised the issues there, uh, the safety issues there, but have, you know, as yet not seen that, uh, seen fit to do anything around uh, automobiles, which is quite scary, really. So, so really, while there are qualified mechanics out there, no doubt there, there's also that because there's a loophole, really, or because there isn't any regulation, then there is scope for unscrupulous dealers and unscrupulous people to take advantage. Well, there is, yeah, or just simply, and, and, and also not to do the job properly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's not even necessarily unscrupulous. It's just people who who are uh, you know believe they have a bit of natural ability and set themselves up. But the thing is, cars are so complicated now. Even even a ten year old car will have a high level of electronics. I mean, you know, the days when it was easy to work on your own car are pretty much gone. And and uh, you know, we hear a lot about cars that will be able to drive themselves. We have a lot of you know sophisticated autonomous systems systems on cars already we trust in our traction controls and our abs brakes and all these kind of things these things keep us safe well the idea of somebody fiddling around with that who doesn't know what they're doing i, I believe is pretty scary and i i, I think that you know it, it's it's really important the public know about this you know that that they they think to ask first of all you know before they most people kind of have their car serviced on the basis of convenience and price you know and 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 that's fine as long as you know the person working on your car is is properly trained to do so and and, and this also i suppose steve safeguards um legitimate mechanics out there it absolutely does you know it, it's it's a it's not the you know it, i mean we we surveyed 99 parliamentarians 57 percent of whom said they believed that the work was low skilled low paid and dirty well you know they're very 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 much out of date you know uh, uh, it, it it's uh it it it's you know you now need to have a a minimum level of competence to even train as a as a technician you know you know i mean typically these days somebody looking to become a, an apprentice mechanic would would need 
five decent GCSEs, including maths, English and a science subject. You know, it's not something that that you can take on without any skills. And, and, and you know, we're, we're, we're saying it's time. You know, we, we have schemes in place. I mean, as, as a professional body, we have a, a professional register in existence, uh, which which uh, people can look at. It's on www imiregister.org.uk and and if you go on to that there are 42,000 registered professionals on there people who are properly qualified it's not an exhaustive list so i would say if, if you don't you know you put your postcode in it will tell you who the people are that are that are on there locally but you know, that's it's very, a, very interesting. Very interesting. Jonathan's been in touch, and Jonathan says it's totally unregulated unless you're in a male, main dealership or top end private garage, as they require qualifications and post apprenticeship experience. Other than that, anyone can work at a car without qualifications, without any qualifications whatsoever. He says scary stuff. That's absolutely right, and this is not just. Uh, passenger cars either this is trucks as well you know so the scary thing is you know you could be barreling down the road with an 18 wheeler rig behind you that's been worked on by somebody who's not properly qualified and that's 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 ex- exceptionally scary isn't it so what are the current regulations in place for automotive technicians well, there are none. There are none. I mean, no. there, there, you know, none there, whatsoever. There, there are none whatsoever. You know, there, as I said, that that that's not to say there aren't a lot of very highly qualified and competent people out there, and there are a lot of good operations that invest highly in their people to make sure that they're competent. But there are there are informal schemes. Uh, you know, we ha- as I said, we have our professional register. There are there are sort of good garage schemes and so on. But you know, the the point is, it, 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 it the only way really we believe uh, to 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 significantly change this is to get the government interested in in, in taking direct action. And and you know that and I be- you know we believe that that's essential for public safety. Well, uh, certainly, the downtown listeners are are. are- are surprised on this one because I'm looking Karen's just commented and she says anyone you let work on your car should have completed some sort of motor mechanic training and that's what you would have thought but not necessarily the case uh, Jean says where's health and safety when you need them or weights and measures or anybody else like this and lots of question marks after her comment as well, well so there's nobody regulating at the moment and you're lobbying to tighten the regulations on licensing yes i mean you, you know you, you, yes you're pr- you're protected by the you know trading standards and the consumer uh, uh, the consumer bodies but that's you know that's a bit that's sort of shutting the door off the horses bolted if you've had an accident and, and maybe got injured or worse um you, you know so th- this is prevention as much as you know uh, 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 about uh, uh, about doing something afterwards you know it, it, the only way to be absolutely sure is to say that people working on on, on motor vehicles should be licensed and that's our our contention and that's what we're lobbying government on and and ian has come in with a comment ian says shockingly hardly new news it's been like that forever but the thing is i wasn't aware of it so it's news to me yeah it's interesting i mean we operate internationally and actually in some other you know it's largely an unregulated business uh, uh, around the world but there are things going on in other countries you know we've just uh, worked with the malaysian government on a license for people working on electric cars no such thing here you know <laughs> so you can't change a, a plug but you could work on a 48000 volt electric car you know uh, without any any uh, uh, any qualifications at all it's crazy isn't it Crazy stuff. Steve Nash, Chief Executive of the Institute of the Motor Industry. One final point with you. MPs in this survey have been compared, uh, MPs have compared certain politicians to car garage workers. Tell us about this. Ed Balls. Uh, yeah, well. Apparently well, fits. Yeah, well, this this is it. They they've been comparing each other to to you know uh, you know using examples of of what each other would be if they worked in the motor industry, and it just underlines mm. the fact that they they don't understand you know what the sector is all about. It's it it, it you know it, it is a, a serious issue. This and it's something that, as I said, you know they believe <laughs> they believe that the work is is low paid, low skilled, and dirty. And actually, I I think a lot of people would think the same about Westminster as well. But but David uh, Cameron, a dodgy car salesman. Yeah, well, exactly. That that's uh, 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 and you know so that panders to those kind of uh, uh, um, stereotypes, if you like, which actually they can do something about. You know, they can uh, uh, they they can actually legislate to make sure that those stereotypes don't exist. Hmm, I wonder how you would compare our politicians to car garage workers here. 
I wonder where Peter Robinson and Martin McGuinness would fit in that. Would the, Would you buy a car from this man? Anyway, listen, Steve, lovely to talk to you. Steve Nash there, the Chief Executive of the Institute of the Motor Industry. Kind of unbelievable, but true. And as I say, it shocks me that you don't need a license to work on a car. And that means really anyone could be fixing it. Yes, there are lots of legitimate mechanics out there who have trained, but... The industry is not licensed. How do you know if someone is qualified or not? You don't. 9181 5050 is the number to call if you want to get in touch with these.